That's it, everybody. We are live. We're back. Hope you're enjoying your Friday afternoon. We're back on the old Webflow train. We're back on the HTML, all the things website train. Last week, we went through setting up this, uh, the overall uh, little details of the nav bar, minus getting all the padding and stuff like that right, but just sort of getting all the uh, pieces, all the Lego blocks, as I like to put it, into the actual component. And then we we went through Webflow symbols, we went through placeholder ads, we went through a little bit of CMS stuff. And this week, right now, we're going to continue with that CMS stuff. We're going to make this section here be a sliding section. Now, this is sort of a weird, possibly weird uh, design choice. We are not 100% sure if we're going to uh, like it, but we are going to certainly give it a try. So... Buckle up, let's just get right on into it. So the part I'm mentioning is is actually this thing here. So I'm just going to zoom in. And, uh, of course, I don't have a mouse wheel again, uh, as I've mentioned before. So, you, there we go. Okay, so uh, we are doing this part here. Now, I'm just going to zoom out slightly here. We're doing this part here, but the thing that's different about this is this does not just collapse as you normally would sort of see it. This actually goes uh, side to side. So these these blocks, their their actual size never gets compromised in this design. It just sort of fades out to the side. And I think I may have uh, another document showing that. Um, let me just actually pull that up. So just to sort of show it, um, I think it's in our wireframes. Yes. So if we go to the homepage, you can see here, if we just zoom in again, that... Um, See how these blocks they never really get compromised. Now maybe like we're never gonna we're never gonna compromise the blocks as I'm calling it, which is like massive resize. We're probably going to end up making them so that they actually like they might change a little bit just for some uh, for some mobile ability. If that's a word, it isn't, but whatever. But uh, actually, it might be. Um, but uh, we're basically gonna make it so that the user can slide back and forth. And this is sort of a UX decision as I've gone through in the previous streams. So let's just sort of make it do it. So right now we I don't think we have any sort of limitations on our uh, on our CMS, which is sort of something that we do uh, actually need to do. Uh, so what we're gonna do is take a look here. This is our uh, featured for section. Uh, if you zoom into through the navigator, we have the collection list. You go in and in, in. We have a featured block. That's one of these guys inside of the featured block. We have our category text. We have our featured text wrapper, which is our little like sort of text area down here. We go down here and we can see there's a featured title. There's a featured meta, and the meta is going to be this sort of uh, smaller stuff like this. Now, the reason why we did it like this is because sometimes you in in redesigns you'll oftentimes be like, hey, I'm just going to like flip this around type of thing, uh, where you you might make this column now instead of row or uh, meaning or horizontal versus vertical direction rather in flexbox. Uh, but so that's why I kind of wrap those and I like to keep my meta, which is sort of the stuff that is expected to be there, uh, but doesn't necessarily stuff that stuff that's always there, but like, isn't always necessarily looked at. I like to keep that in a separate div because it's sort of something we can sacrifice. If you will, we can, we can always hide that. We can always move it around. And it's always something that I experiment on if I'm messing around with different font types and that type of thing. So we obviously haven't chosen our typography, uh, for this yet. We're just going to throw all the Lego blocks on the, uh, on the thing here and get this going. So, uh, we're going to take a look and with our, with our design, uh, we obviously have a limit of four and we can do that in the Webflow editor. Here we go into here. Oh, we actually did it. So we did, we did, we checked limit. Uh, we're going to start at one, uh, meaning it's the, it's number one in, uh, in here. So we're just going to go into a blog post and you can see num this is the first one up here. Test blog, uh, test blog post two. So it's going to back in here and here's test blog post two and there's test blog post. So it's starting at one and it's going to list out four. Now it's only showing two. So we know that that's, we only actually have two. So we know that's working. So let's actually just go in and start making more blog posts. I'd say myself. Um, so I think we're just using the same SEO thing. So we're just going to duplicate this two times and we're just going to call this uh, three just so that it's easier easy for us to identify we'll keep it as this we'll just put that it's I don't know uh, Marcus Phoenix sure uh, okay and it is going to be a podcast post sure whatever and we'll make it uh, audio that's fine at oh we have to actually add that don't we so just do that audio there we go there's a tag created the tag and now it's in there so there's that and then we'll just create another one. So we'll just duplicate this. This will be another podcast post. We'll make it uh, test blog post number four. Easy enough. And we'll make it, I don't know, uh, here's an old school throwback to an old, old, old game. Nathan Hale. That's a really old, 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 old game. Okay. So here we go. 
Uh, all right. So let's actually, uh, I think we may need to uh, publish them. I can't remember. So let's just actually publish it. And reload. I'm not sure why it is not. Oh, right. They need to be featured. That's right. I forgot that we did that last time. So let's go and do that. So let's go feature our three and four. Uh, or did we do that? Uh, three and four. No, we did not. Why is it that three and four are not showing up? Uh, let us take a look. So they're all published. All four are here. Uh, this thing is sh supposed to be showing four. Let's see if we can take away the limits. No, that's still doing it. Okay. Okay. Uh, why is this not? That's very strange, isn't it? Okay. Oh, <laughs> I should not forgot. I showed off. I showed off uh, filters. Right. So we don't actually need these filters. That's why. There we go. Okay. So we just had filters that was limiting it to the authors. I should have just left those the same. Okay. So there's our four. Uh, so we'll make a fifth just to actually like show that off. That like that that that, that functionality is working. So we're just gonna uh, take the first post here and get rid of copy. Call that five. Uh, we'll leave it as me. That's fine. We'll leave it as a blog post. That's totally fine. We'll leave all this. This is all just test stuff. And as you can see here, we go back, boom, it only shows the four and it bumped the first post. So we only have five, four, three, two, and then the one is obviously gone. So um, that's basically that. Uh, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna slowly sort of, okay. So we can see that this is cutting it off on the left and the right. But what we want it to ultimately do is have it to be on this type of screen size and we'll and probably on this size too so you can see how responsive it is before these breakpoints so we don't want it to wrap but we don't but we want this side to remain we want this side to remain in the screen so uh okay let me let's let's think here so right now we have this set up so i've never actually done this before like i said this is just like a it's a bit of a weird one. It's like not a typical thing you do on a blog. Like normally you just have them collapse and, or rather wrap more specifically. And chances are we're going to have them wrap. I just don't know whether this is going to be good for UX, but it'll be interesting for this. So let's see. Um, let's jump right in. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's see. Uh, okay. So we have our featured block. Let's take a look at our settings. And okay, so it is display, uh, it is vertical, that's fine. So it is being aligned that way. Um, that's totally fine. It is centered. It's uh, justified that way, although that's probably doesn't really matter to us. Oh, wait, no, this is for each featured block. So we need the actual whole list. So right, so this is being aligned like that. Uh, each of these, so this is the collection list. Let's see what we have. So we haven't actually touched the collection list wrapper. And actually that's that's one thing too on, in Webflow is I really rarely ever touch the collection list wrapper. I don't know why necessarily why that is a a thing that it, that like, I don't know why we need so many uh, divs. Maybe it's for something specific with Webflow. I'm not absolutely sure why there's so many wrappers necessarily, but Okay. Um, okay. So we have it's horizontal. It justifies that way. Let me see this section. It might be the it might be the fact that we have a section attached to it. So we may actually <laughs> we may actually be using that that exact div that I just said. We don't, that that I'm not sure why we don't use. So let's just like see what happens. So we're gonna use this navigator and sort of this is sort of essentially what I use uh, on what I guess everyone uses on Webflow instead of constantly inspecting element this is sort of how you navigate through and you can see how there's the purple box around the around the objects here or the blue boxes so purple boxes represent the uh, the actual CMS and then the uh, blue boxes obviously represent just like a div or like uh, just an element that we've added from the ad menu so uh, okay let's take a look here so obviously our section is staying at full width as it's supposed to but this thing here isn't so it it's just doing it's just doing no overflow so i don't want a wrap but i want the overflow to be scrollable so let's see what happens there so it's going to add that which is kind of annoying but we're going to see can i not so i can't necessarily scroll here let's take a look and i can't necessarily scroll in here okay so i'm not really sure okay 
let's go in. This is the whole list. And let's just say the max width of this thing, which is our, let's say the max width is 100%. Let's see if that works for us. Okay. Let's just see. Okay, so that's starting to squish it. But I don't want these things to shrink. So we're going to start touching some stuff that I'm uh, in Flexbox that I'm not super familiar with, which is these like kind of stretch and grow. See how there's like, so the, the default is shrink if needed, and that's what it's doing. Then there's grow if possible. And then there's uh, don't shrink or grow. So we're going to set it to that. There we go. There's what we want. So I'm not super familiar. I just, I don't use a lot of the sizing uh, stuff on Flexbox. It's sort of something where I need it on a project. I look it up, I do it, and then I just don't need it again. So this is working. And you can see that this is working like this. Now, I don't know if I, like I said, I don't know if I like this, uh, but this is how the design is. So we're just going to leave it at this and then we'll end up, you know, kind of changing it, as I said. So that is working. Now, I don't know in Webflow, which is a good question. I like how I just said this thing's useless and then I just used it, but... <laughs> That's, that's web development, so uh, or any technical stuff, to be honest. Okay, so let's uh, let's see something here. So it's working, but I don't know if I like... So the collection list has this overflow. So let's just, like reset that, because I don't know if I want those scroll bars there. See, then I can't do it, but yet... Okay, one sec, what's this? Scroll, always scroll bar for overflowing content. So let's do an auto. Perfect. Right. Excellent. Again, it's just something, it's it, it's something weird. So when you get into the flow with using something like Webflow, you just sort of like start throwing, you just, you, like you can really rapidly kind of fire out a blog. And then when you try to get into these like weird, like this is kind of a weird design for the for the top of a blog. But I mean, once you do that, like, I mean, Webflow is powerful enough to do it yet. Like obviously you have to start using some stuff that you're just not familiar with or stuff they haven't used in a while. So, okay, so that's working. Uh, let's, I guess we'll let's just dive into another section, I suppose. Um, let's go and take a look at our prototype. Is this our prototype? Yes, it is. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing is going to be the community spotlight. So this will be interesting. So this is going to be not just a blog post. This will actually require another collection in our CMS. It's going to be called uh, Community Spotlight. Uh, as you can see, just from the sort of uh, meta and the title, we need the date, the uh, author or the person that is contributing from the community, and the uh, name, so the uh, like title of the project. So let's go and build that out. So we will take a look at our navigator and we're just going to hide all this. I like to keep my navigator clean because I just get too dragged in here. And sometimes I notice like I'll accidentally click and drag for like a quick second and then I'll drag something into another section, which is just not good. Okay. So in the body, go here, we're going to go into a section. Okay. And this is, we're just going to call this, um, I think it's just called community spotlight. Yes. So let's call this community spotlight section perfect okay we're not gonna really change much in the section uh, other than that um okay so what we're gonna do is we need a we need to make this sort of header module thing that's going to be used sort of throughout the site so we're just going to zoom in here and i'll show you that so we have this sort of flexible uh flexible width sort of header section that's going to be used Obviously throughout the homepage and then obviously throughout the site as well. So let's go and take a peek at this. Um, okay. Community spotlight from the news. So I'm just wondering, like I don't I don't want a symbol. So a symbol in Webflow, if you're not familiar, is something that's like repeatable. So something like the nav bar or the footer. So I don't want to make a symbol out of it. Um, or maybe I do. Webflow does have a new sort of dynamic content thing for symbols. You know what? Let's experiment with that. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So I've never actually used that particular feature just because the sites I've uh, spun up on here are just obviously older than that feature because they're it's a new feature. So okay, let's let's just see what happens. So let's uh, let's make sure we're in here and we're gonna add a div. So we're gonna add a div, and the div is gonna be I don't know a um, header section wrapper maybe. We might rename that something better, but we'll do that. And inside of there, what do we have? We have a title, and we have one link. And then we also have the bottom border. Now, I, yeah, I suppose we just we should just use a border. I was going to use, like, another div and just make it into a line, but we'll make it into a border, so that's fine. So, let's go do that. Uh, let's go. And inside of here, we'll make sure we're clicked into here. And we're going to add one text block. 
Uh, it's a heading, so let's add a heading. It'll probably be like an H2, and then it will go back into here again. Make sure we click in, and we'll add a link. And the link's there. And the link always says, or the, it's a link block. Wait a sec. Wait a second. Wait a second. I got the right, wrong type of link. Link. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, text link. Perfect. Okay, so let's go in here. Get rid of that link block. We don't need that. We need a text link. And the text link needs to say, was it show all or see more or something? I'm just going to put see more for a sec. Let's take a look. It is see all. Right. Okay, this is exciting. Okay, so let's get this going. So, inside of this, we're going to go in here. We're going to set up the flex. We're going to go uh, that it needs to be. Let's going to hide this for a sec. We're going to make it so that they go to the ends of the uh, thing. It's obviously max width at the moment. Uh, we are going to make it so that it centers like so. And it does not center like that, of course. We are going to add a little bit of padding to that section. So, I'm just going to see how much maybe I added. It's kind of right to the edge. This part's kind of right to the edge. I kind of maybe would want to emulate the amount. Let's just zoom in here. Whoop. So I'd kind of want to emulate the amount of padding I've kind of emulated here, maybe here. Like I kind of, yeah, yeah. So we'll do like maybe just do like a five or a ten. So let's just give that a go. So we will go into here, go into our heading section wrapper, and I think what I want to actually do is this part is going to be a hundred. Is there like a readable width or something like that? No. Uh, okay, I forget now. There was something. Oh, it's a container, right? Maybe we should experiment with a container for this. Let's see. So there's the section's totally fine, but inside of here, let's add a container. I don't know. These are sort of like a readable container. See how see how it kind of makes it so that it's uh you know just a certain amount of certain amount of width. Uh, that's sort of like kind of what I call a readable a readable container, and the readable container is sort of just something that um. So when you have like an ultra wide screen or one of those screens where you have multiple screens that have a very small bezel and then you kind of combine them into be like one big TV, for example, as they used to do in the 90s, of which they did not have small bezels back then. But when you made those or when you saw those, like it was just one big screen. So obviously reading text across all of those, for example, would be horrible. And now that we have monitors that are super mega wide or people with trio monitor setups obviously we're going to have situations in which you don't want to have a line of text going like 6,000 pixels wide or something nuts. So this is sort of something that kind of contains it. Now I can see that the container is already kind of small and I don't know if I want to mess with that. So, um, I think I might have to, I think I might just make my own container. So let's just delete that for now. I don't know. We might, we may bring it, we may bring it back. Uh, we'll see, but I do know that for sure that I want no, I don't want, I don't want this to be 100% of the width, and I want, well, I guess, I don't know whether the sections will go, will, like, uh, contain the, the width, let's actually just take a peek, I forget if that's a default function, um, I don't know whether you can kind of make this go, can you make this go ultra wide, no, I can't right now, okay, that's fine, I'm not gonna mess around with that, I'm not gonna mess around with the semantics, let's, sit, let's get actually building, okay, so, uh, header section wrapper. Perfect. Okay, so we have... We're going to go down here. Uh, we're going to add a border right here. We're going to add it there. We're going to, I don't know, make it five pixels tall. That's probably too big, but we'll do that for now. We'll click in here. We have our our uh, hat blue, as we're calling it. So there's our hat blue. That's working great. We're going to go into the he section header again, and we're going to go up, and we're just going to roughly lay all this crap out. So, ten pixels in there. Ten pixels in there. As you can see, Kate, they're bumped in a little bit. Now, obviously, it, we don't want it. We don't want it the full width, but we do want it to be the full width of whatever is containing it. So, maybe we will get a container and we'll just like edit it. But let's just mess around with this. So we're still in this section there. Let's go. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like maybe like four, th three. That sounds okay. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, we're just gonna call this. I don't know. Section heading. Just to give it two words. I like to see like a word break. I'm gonna do stuff like this, and then uh, we're gonna try that. We're actually gonna bring that container back. Bring the container up, take this, drop this container in. See how it's now, there you go, perfect. So what I do want is for this section heading thing to fill the width that it has at its disposal, 100%. But I do not want this to be, okay, so what I want is, I wanna see the container 
I don't know what the container... I know the container obviously limits the width. I don't know what it limits it to. Let's actually just, like, look that up, I think. So, let's go... Um, Webflow container... Whoop. Oh, my God, rumbing. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, no thank you. Okay. Webflow container... Let's see what it does. Let's see what this thing is. So this is one of those things. Uh, this is one of those things that's a very much like a web, a webflow thing. Like there's not a, a standard quote unquote container, you know, in in web development. Like everyone just kind of makes their own containers. Apparently this link doesn't work, which is which isn't great. Can it? Can it work? Can it work, please? No. Refresh. No. Does anything? Any of these links work? Okay, that that works. Perfect. Okay. Anatomy of container. It is a div block with a predefined with predefined styles. See, there we go. So those are those Webflow predefined styles. Uh, it comes with 940 pics width on larger displays that keeps your content centered relative to the browser window on smaller devices like phones or tablets. Containers extend across the full width of the screen. Personally, I don't like having 940. So I'm going to say like, I'm going to call this the hat container and i'm gonna see i've never actually like really mess around with a container usually just make my own div let's just see what happens so it's usually 940 oh you actually can't change these interesting okay well that concludes that chapter so we are getting rid of that container and making our own so go in here go in here add another div call this what i usually call it I call this the readable container We are going to take this thing out of the container. So now it goes back to full width. We are going to get rid of this hat container. And then we're going to go in here and drop this in. So the readable container, which we, which we might rename hat container, because I actually did enjoy that. Okay. Okay, let it... Width. I like to do like 1100 usually. I just have a 10, 1080p monitor, so maybe I'm biased. <laughs> What? Uh, okay, so we want our section to obviously center all that for us. Again, I'm a huge proponent of Flexbox, so let's just go and do that. We'll center that up. There we go. That's what we want. So we'll adjust this. Now, this thing should be the same width as this, so maybe we should put this this whole thing in here. Uh, this thing is called a readable container. Uh, let us try to think into here. We'll go back. Let's add another div, and we might be getting into a bit of like a div hell here but let's just see what happens so we'll call this um uh, what the heck did we just call that <laughs> oh readable container right okay so we have readable container take this stuff it in there oh come on now i saw you do the animation oh all right no there okay so obviously that's not great <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's change the readable container I change that width to maybe like i don't know 1500 as long as it sort of fits on a 1080p monitor without being totally ridiculous and then we'll we'll adjust like again we'll, we'll adjust all this stuff as we go of course we're not just gonna we're not just gonna leave all this we haven't even chosen typography like this looks like this looks like a, a prototype and it literally is <laughs> so um okay so we're good that way um now headings come with a lot of sort of predefined styles that you're allowed to change like these orange figures here so that's sort of why this thing's kind of off kilter if you've already noticed and it's kind of too big like that's one thing that's why i always hesitate with headings like especially in webflow which is in general too though i just really don't like messing around with headings too much uh i like to just sort of make a piece of text big and then call it heading now i understand for seo purposes that you should use headings on stuff like this and that's why we're using a heading in this particular case but i just mean in in sort of I guess I'm more of a rich text environment, uh, maybe more of like a personal word documentation, like using like word, like literally using word. Um, okay, so let's, um, this is going to be an H2, that's totally fine. I don't like how it's in, in balance, let's like change that. There's the size, there's the thing there. Okay, so that's working. Uh, now, let's get the other divs in here, so we have like a little bit of scroll room, and then we'll go through the other stuff. So, we're going to go zoom in here, uh, we're already zoomed in, let's go and take a look. So, the okay, so we need... Here's our featured blocks. These are going to be our community spotlight blocks. And we may use blocks like this 
in the future. So that's why we just called these, like, I think they call like the featured row or whatever they were called, the featured blocks. We might use that type of language in another piece uh, of the uh, prototype of which we, of which we have it somewhere else in the design. So let's add like, I don't know, what do we want to call these? Like just like 50 blocks, maybe just something generic because they're 50% width. So let's do that. So back to Webflow. Uh, let's go, go, go. Let us add a whoop. Okay. Right. Let's let's not go too crazy. Let's go and actually make the CMS. So we know community spotlight stuff is going to be different. So we're going to add a new collection. We're going to call it community spotlight. We know it needs a name. We know it needs a slug. Um, we can pull the date from the published date or any of those other sort of meta that's already made for us by Webflow. So we'll just use that. Uh, we know we need an image. So let's grab that. Let's make that there's an image and we'll make this our um i don't know what's gonna call this our cover image we can always change this stuff later and we're gonna make this required uh now we're just gonna use stock photos for now we're not gonna have any help text for now um we do need author now authors or i guess it's i guess it's contributor so let's do that let's go um ooh, i do not need oh i thought i had another image okay let's go and i guess it just be plain text for now we're gonna just call this like contributor now we might end up making sort of a contributor slash authors another collection and then like multi-reference them and stuff like that if there's more people contributing projects and stuff but for now we'll just make it really easy and we'll we're gonna max out your characters so it's single short line easy enough uh we'll just name this like name of the contributor and uh let's go i don't know minimum i don't care this guy let's just go 50 i just don't want to go too ham like i know that some people will especially if uh you're non-technical although a lot of specifically if you're working for customers they'll try to like overuse a field big time and then it's like they're like hey this looks horrible and you go in and it's like dude that was the date field and you wanted like a title in that area so instead of filling in the date you like left the date in there and then you just filled in this huge amount of text you know so i i like to in my CMSs for a UX experience, including for myself, I like to limit it so that the design more or less can handle whatever the CMS can be is, is thrown at, excuse me, the CMS. And of course we can adjust it as needed, but that way it's harder for people to make a mistake. And the goal is just so that you don't have tickets coming in. You don't have customers calling you all the time saying like, Hey, what's going on here? You just make it easy. Same with the help text, big thing. You know, we don't need the help text for the, for the cover image, but, but absolutely 100% later, and for customers, I should say 100% for customers, cover image or any images need to, they need to know, you know, min max resolution, uh, min max file size, uh, stuff like that. Or uh, more specifically, aspect ratio is a big one because sometimes they'll, you know, source something from Fiverr or something like that, just a quick graphic. And obviously Fiverr, like the, the artist kind of chooses the resolution. And so sometimes it's absolutely massive and sometimes it's just 1080p. So, okay, let's go and create that community spotlight. Um, you know what? Let's let, let's let Webflow do this for us. All right, cool. Now we got some of that. So now we got a header section wrapper. That's all good and well. Um, like I said, we're kind of getting deep into the uh, the old div train here, so we may change this. But you know, we'll, we'll we're gonna we're gonna adjust and refactor as we go. So we're gonna go here. Um, we want a collection list, and we want to scroll down slightly. We want our selection or collection, I guess I should say, to be community spotlights. We want them to be two column. And we want the we want to see what the empty state is. Empty state's just generic enough. Good enough for me. Click items. Click in here. Uh, let's limit this now. So let's uh, we're good that way. We're going to select this guy, the collection list wrapper. Click that. We're going to click on our elements. We're going to click on our limit items. We're going to click. Uh, we only want two at a time. We want to start at, start at one. That's working great. Did it make dummy items and then not give me stock photos? Oh, no, it did. Okay. I guess some of this stuff, like, like again, like, you know, with any software, sometimes that happens, right? Where there's just like a web flow thing where sometimes you just have to publish again, you know, stuff like that. So, okay, we're going to, we're going to publish. Um, we are just going to like quickly refresh. I'm not sure why. Oh, I know why. Cause it's blank. What am I doing? I'm so used to, and that's another thing. I'm so used to just pulling in 
you know, like symbols and everything else of like effectively little tools and little shortcuts I've made on other projects that when I just throw in a collection list, I'm just like, where's my background color? Where's my background? Like I'm literally, this is effectively just a div that can pull in information. Okay. Easy enough. So let's take a look here. Take a look at the design. This is going to be our meta. No doubt. This is going to be our title. Obviously no doubt. So let's take a look at how we structured our top part to see if we can make it sort of similar. So we're going to go into our feature block, click on here. This is a black block category. That's not what we want. We want to see featured text wrapper. So we have a text wrapper. Then we just have our straight up H1. And then we have our, our featured meta wrapper. So I like the idea of this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to do a div. That's going to be a text wrapper. We're going to have just an H2 or whatever we choose. Um, Cause this isn't as big of a featured item. And we're also going to have a, a uh, meta wrapper. Okay. So I'm probably going to forget this like 400 times, but that's fine. We're going to click in here. This is our collection item. That's great. Click in here. We are going to add a div. We are going to call this community spotlight text wrapper probably too big um i'm just gonna rename this it's gonna call it spotlight text wrapper good enough because nothing else on the site's named spotlight so that's totally fine so we have that in there now and inside of there we uh we want to make sure we're actually selecting that inside of there we want a header throw that in and we want a um okay make sure we're selecting that we want uh, another div, actually, <clears throat> for the meta. And then we don't want featured. We want this. So then we want inside of here, we want a uh, just, I think, just two plain text. Plain text. And we'll just copy that. Paste that. Okay, perfect. So we can see that this thing's open here. So we're just going to do this. So spotlight text wrapper. Perfect. We want to have uh, this will be our spotlight uh, heading. Sure. And um, I suppose actually we may use this like two column design more generically than a spot than just for the spotlight. So let's actually just call this the 50 width text wrapper. Okay. We're going to call this the 50 width heading. And this will isolate it because when I typed in that heading uh, class, the very first thing that came to mind was this is more than likely going to, I'm going to end up trying to like make the individual spotlight section. And then I'm going to have like the heading and I'm going to call it spotlight heading. And I'm going to have to make another class because they're going to, they're going to clash, clash of the classes, I guess. Um, so, okay. Okay, so then I guess this would be 50 width uh, meta wrapper. And then I want to see what I named these. So, like, this is feature date. And then, so I'm just going to call this, like, feature or 50 width uh, date. And 50 width. We, again, we might refactor these names. Uh, 50 width, uh, what was it? Uh, contributor. Right. Okay. So let's just start throwing some dynamic data in here and then start sort of making it look nice. So um, we already have this. Uh, this is our collection item. Hmm. I'm thinking what we should do is we, we leave this. We call this a 50 width item. And... We call this 50 with uh, list. Perfect. Okay. So that's good enough for now. Uh, we, we may like, you know, shrink these, some of these titles down, make them a little bit better, but that's fine. Get, that's good for now. So uh, inside of here, we want to make it so that, uh, oh, we got to pull in dynamic. So we got to click on this element settings and we want to take our background image from our cover image. Here we go. Perfect. So go in here. Now here's the weird, a little bit of a weird thing. So obviously if you're in, um, if you're in like regular CSS and you're just like sort of working away on a project and you're just like typing away, you will obviously come in and you would set your background uh, image and then you will set your settings in Webflow. It's a little bit weird. So obviously I've just set like the background image here, 
But then I can't set the settings here, meaning like background cover and stuff like that, which is what I am going to use because I prefer that. So, I mean, obviously, we're kind of you think you're kind of screwed there, but we're not. So we have to go down into here, add an image. See how it does this? So you leave it at transparent. You just click on cover. Okay, you just leave this. You just don't change the image. And this is how you're setting the settings. So you don't want it to tile. You probably want it to center in the center. Uh, you want it to, I prefer cover myself. And then I'm going to scroll down here. I literally can't. Okay, so these are, yeah. So the height of these are being um, determined by the, uh, the contents. And obviously we just have a couple like little pieces of thing and like some text inside of whatever. So I'm going to click in here. And we are going to make these a a fixed height of sorts just to see how it looks. And then that might be how we just deal with this uh, moving forward. So we'll do like, I don't know, I'd start around like 350 maybe. See, like we like to scroll down here. Um, what I'm actually going to do is just to make this easier is I'm just going to, so I'd like to be able to like sort of see this more centered rather than just at the bottom. So I'm just going to take, I don't know. It's going to literally make a section and just make it big <laughs> just to make it easier for presentation purposes. So I'm just going to make another section. This is purely for presentation. It's at the bottom. I'm literally just going to call this spacer and we're just going to make the height like 750. Yeah, that's way better. So now we have this big, like sort of like palette we can work on. Okay, perfect. So that's obviously just a spacer and we'll get rid of that soon. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to call that temp spacer because I always look for the word temp in all my, uh, all my code and stuff like that and temp usually means i can just remove it i do that with my files as well actually that's a handy little windows tip if you will hey cybersect how's it going um hope you're enjoying the stream if you have any questions please uh, feel free to uh, reach out okay so let's uh let's do this so we i like this actually i like that heading i like it at 350 uh let's take a look at what it looks like when it squishes down so these these ones will squish down i want these to squish down that's why we did the thing so that looks pretty good and then what we'll do is we'll probably end up shrinking the height as we go through them. Um, now, I believe that was a part of the design. Let's actually just check. Uh, ba -ba -ba. No, that's not the right one. Is it? Oh, it would be on the homepage, wouldn't it? No, right. Yes, so it goes to one-to-one. -one. I, thought, I, I thought it would change. That's right. Okay, yeah. This was sort of the experimental one. Right. Okay, so let's do that. So we will go back to Webflow and... Go back here. Here's our text wrapper. Here's our meta wrapper. Meta wrapper in, in this particular design case is, uh, let's go here, is going to be at the top. So we're just going to have to reorganize our items. No, no problem. So as you can see, our text wrapper, or our uh, heading is up top within our text wrapper. So we're just going to flip those around. So now our two pieces are set like that. And our 50 text wrapper is going to be a flex uh, with the items on the end. And we're gonna, uh, you know, probably needlessly, but center it like set it like that. And then, um, oh wait, no, 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 no. That is wrong. I selected the wrong item. Whoops. So you can just easily reset. See, look, I just reset everything. So this is what I meant to select. The meta wrapper. This guy. To the ends. Center it that way. Now we have our metas in the corners. Click this guy. Click on this. Okay. We want to make it vertical, okay? And I don't care about centered, uh, but I do want them to be one or the other. So what we're going to do is this text wrapper is obviously just being as big as it needs to. So we're going to make this item relative, which it already is. And then we're going to take this item and uh, make it 100. Oh, not 100% width. Not 100% width. No, get out of here. Get out of here. 100%. There we go. Perfect. So now, this is just sort of like an overlay over top of that. And we're probably going to end up adding uh, what I call a, a BG mask or a uh, background mask. Uh, just to make the, the writing a little bit more uh, viewable. And we're probably going to end up doing that for this as well. But we'll make a generic one that we can use in... A, maybe like one or two generic ones that we can use in sort of multiple cases. So let's do it. So, we're here. Let's start pulling in some dynamic data. Let's pull in our date. So, get text from... Here's all our things that we, um, you know, put into the actual CMS ourselves. But here's some of the dynamic data that uh, just comes from making a post, obviously, with the CMS. And so we can go in here and say, you know, let, let's do the uh, the created on. Sure. 
Uh, this is going to be the contributor name. So contributor, uh, the contributor name. I did it with a 55 or 50 character limit. Obviously, this should be a name, but we're just doing sort of the lorem ipsum sort of uh, writing for now. This is a heading. Uh, the heading should literally be the name. So let's do that. Perfect. Okay. So that is working. That's great. Just the overall layout is sort of working. That's no problem. But obviously, it's not. It's hard to read, and it's uh, not, you know, stretching down. So like this is fine. But then once it goes to here, these should be one to one. And then there should be some some margin, I would say. And there should be some margin now, actually, to be honest. So let's um. Let's go into our items. See, like this is where we sort of start getting into the weeds here, where we start going into like what I call div hell, where it's just like which wrapper, <laughs> like which wrapper has the has this thing in here. Okay, uh, let's go. So we just set it to two calls. So let's like I don't know, put like ten pixels in between them. And that made it wrap. So, like, maybe, like, the two calls shouldn't be done. Like, let's take a look. This is, like, a... I just set a Webflow setting. I actually usually don't use the columns. Um, okay. So, I don't want that. Like, I definitely want the two columns. But I want this to be... So, this is, like, a 50% width. Um, see, it is doing a 50% width. I don't know. Let's do, like, a... Let's do, like, a 43%. Um, yeah, so they have 43, and then that's what? I don't know if that'd be enough, or maybe that's too much. Like, if we do 50, like, obviously, if we go back to 50. No, 50 bumps it. Interesting. Okay, well, I don't ever want this to wrap. I just want it to... I feel like maybe I shouldn't use the columns. I think I should just use, like, straight-up Webflow, or straight-up Flexbox. I think I'm going to do that so let's full width i want to see what the what the default settings are when you put something in this is perfect for the spacer <laughs> the spacer is perfect for trying stuff out like this let's try this what is the default if we just said we want community spotlights oh so it is full width is the default let's let's use the default i'd say let's get rid of that i feel like i'm just gonna i just i'm more comfortable and i just i'm gonna prefer holding this Holding the fort down effectively with flexbox. I don't want to like, deal with co like official columns and stuff like that. So let's do this. Okay. Now obviously this is going to change some of our layouts and some of this stuff kind of got like knocked out of the way, but it's fine. Okay. So like this actually changed it. Okay. I thought it maybe it changed it just on like one part of it. Okay. No big deal. So we'll fix this. So collection list wrapper. This is the actual list. The list itself. Uh, this will be our thing. So it'll be flex. There we go. See now we're starting to get what we were looking for. There's our um. There's our, uh, which colors, uh, margin. Now, obviously the margin is applying to the, uh, left in both cases. So this is not aligned here. So what we can do is we can add a combo class to sort of compensate for that. Uh, is Webflow's HTML in, in the result good for sending it to developers? Um, so I do know that some people, uh, some develop, some developers or designers or whatever you want to call them, um, because some people, some people uh, don't know code that use Webflow, but they, I mean, they, I guess they kind of know some code. Like, they know CSS and, I mean, HTML is not really coding, but they know layout. You know what I mean? Like, it's more technical than your than your average person that's, like, maybe using Wix, for example. Um, but, and obviously there's, you can embed JavaScript. But uh, what you can do, actually, with Webflow is you can just export the code, uh, which I believe, somewhere up here. Yeah, so you can export the code, and I'll just show you here, uh, Cybersect. So... Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of crap I got to do for, like, upgrading my plan or whatever. But here's, like, a snippet of, like, all this stuff. So, use your HTML, your CSS, your JS, and your assets. And so, like, you can export this code and give it to uh, maybe a dev or someone who's going to be using a different CMS other than the Webflow CMS. If you do not want to host on, to, on Webflow, that's sort of the big thing, right? Where you can get a either a cheaper plan from Webflow that doesn't have a CMS... Or, um, you know, have, I think, well, there are free, there is like a free project or something you can get. There's some sort of free offering you'd have to check. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, so effectively, this is what it's generating, right? Like you can literally see it. Here's the nav bar container. Here's the social, whatever. Let's like, let's go back. Let's try to find the area we're in. Here's the featured four. If you were in the last stream, if you're in this one, here's the community spotlight section. And then here's the readable container and everything. So it is generating like really clean code. 
especially for a visual editor. That's what I'm trying to get at ultimately. And so if, so to answer your question kind of as a capstone to it, it really depends on what the use case is. But if you have a guy a, like a developer that really wants something like a UI built for him so that he can plug in data, like plug in a CMS and you want to use Webflow, you can absolutely do that. You can absolutely do that. Um, and it generates like really clean, like obviously like there's a little bit of JS in there stuff and stuff like that too. And there's your assets and that one and whatever else, but like you could, you could take one of these uh, and we used to use a CMS for small business, comp- uh, uh, small business uh, customers. I'm saying small business companies. I guess that still applies, but anyway, uh, we used to use a CMS called uh, Couch CMS, and Couch CMS, Couch CMS is is a uh, it's it's like an independent project as far as I know. It's a very smaller project. It's a very small project. Um, not a, I shouldn't say it's a very small project, but it's a smaller project. Like it's not like a WordPress, and it it, it just has a really a slim down editor, which I like for some clients. And so we, I'm never actually exported the code from here, but I'll tell you right now that if I needed, if it was an emergency and I needed to make a Couch CMS site, this would be the way I would do it fire it out in Webflow, and then I would do it that, like 100%, 100%. So I hope that answers your question. If you have any other follow-up questions, let me know. I know that was long-winded, um, but that's just me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to actually sort of fix this. So since it's a 50-width item, there's obviously a left and a right item. And so we don't want to apply this margin to both items necessarily. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hide this, whoop, and we are going to divvy it up. So we're going to take, um, okay, let's see, actually. Oh, that's interesting, actually. I just realized. So I was going to add a combo class to this and have like a left and then a right one. But I wonder if you can do that with a collection list. I guess you kind of can't, right? That's interesting. Well, all right, let's see something here. So let's see if we can compensate. Let's send them to the ends. Let's go into the item. Let's not set the width to 50. Set it to 45 instead. I was going to show off a combo class, but let's just not do that. 45. Obviously too too big of a gap. I don't know. 47. That's nah, still too big. I don't know. 49. Yeah, there we go. Wait, really? That's 1%? I guess. Yeah, I guess because it's... Yeah, all right. Just seems like, just seems like a small percentage. That's fine. Okay. No worries, no worries, CyberSec. If you any other, have any other questions or need clarification on that, let me know. No problem. Okay, so um, we have that. That's working. So I think I want to make these uh, into squares now, but not not until they're smaller than this. So let's do that. Right to the tablet. Go into here. 50%. Uh, so it's 100% height. Uh, one sec. That's the wrong item. Item. Here we go. So it's 49% width and uh, 350 height. So I'm thinking, hmm. So this is the smallest size in this breakpoint, in the tablet breakpoint. Hmm. When I hit squares, I like to be specific with my pixel counts. So I'm thinking we should do, let's try 350 pixels. 350 is a bit too small even for this thing. And it's definitely too small for this. Huh, let me see. I'm thinking... I know that somebody probably is thinking, like, I could use grid here. I've actually never used grid. Um, I should really get into it. I did try grid for, like, a very brief period. And then we had a project come up uh, that I needed to use Bootstrap for. And it just it just fell by the wayside. That's just, you know, just what happened. Um, okay. Uh, 350 is not... Eh, 350 is not big enough. Let's do... I don't know. I don't know. What, actually, what is this width? What is this width and pixel count? Uh, seven, okay. Hmm, we could do like, I don't know, 450 maybe? No, because it a little wrap then. Let's just do like 400. Let's just play with it. Let's see what happens. So I like that height, but that's not going to work. 375 maybe? 375. That works. Like that. Although then it looks kind of weird that way. Hmm. See, this is one of those things where like in practice, like obviously the prototype is like a fixed thing but if we click into here like this is obviously a fixed thing maybe we should just give it a dynamic width that's probably the easiest way to do it yeah see flex grid might be able to help i've literally never used grid um like i said i don't know maybe we can we can 
You try it, maybe, right? <laughs> this is gonna be, this is gonna be one heck of a. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna show you another feature of Webflow before I do this. <laughs> okay, I think this is the keyboard shortcut. Yeah, so you can save a backup, and uh, Webflow backs up at certain intervals and stuff like that. Uh, you can check, you know, what those intervals are and stuff like that on your own time. But uh, it does have like a backup system that you can roll back to. But if you press con on Windows, I'm using Windows. Uh, control shift S on windows uh, and I'm using the left control and left left shift if that matters it will pull this up <laughs> and this is this is how you make like a hard point save that you name so I'm gonna name this before grid <laughs> we're gonna see what happens so this looks great but let's go into tablet and let's um, remove our changes at this breakpoint so it'll just go back to that and let's oh man <laughs> i'm like a lot more i'm a lot more scared than i should be <laughs> okay oh my god <laughs> okay um one fr one fr yeah okay um oh oh my god Columns, gap, uh, 16. Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I, see, I've never used the Webflow control, and I've never used grid. So, this is going to be... <laughs> I guess it's going to... You're going to see me at my worst, potentially, and we may have to roll back. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Flex items end. See what this does. Okay. <laughs> That was good. Distribute. Uh, enhance. En enhance. So this is a grid item. Maybe like this should have been grid? Grid child styles aren't saved to the class. So you can alter the placement of other items that share the same class. Edit the parent grid. Oh my god. Two rows. I don't know if I want that. Uh oh. Oh, I added three rows. I want one row. Two columns. That's right. What's this? Zero columns auto generated. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. So now that these are like that. Oh, these are set to fifty percent, aren't they? Aha. Uh -huh. Are these perfect squares? No, they're they're definitely not. In first, you can remove bottom cells. Right. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so we got that. So now, our distribution is fine. So is there, like, an easy way, CyberSec, to just, like, make it a square? In in grid? <laughs> Learn something new every day here. We're learning it live on the air. That's what we all do, right? We all, we all hop on Twitch and go, like, let's learn something new. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a way just to, like aspect ratio it or something like am i crazy like i mean i i mean i literally don't know what's happening so i mean that's very possible dense column rows um i'm gonna google this make perfect square in css grid how to create a flexible square grid. The trick is to add an invisible square element. Here we go. All right into the weeds. Right into the weeds of this. <laughs> oh my god. It's like... <laughs> um, struggling to make flexible... Try the pen and resize the window. Okay. Oh. Oh, I thought he had like a... Like a specific window... Okay, so you just... Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, alright. This is what generally what we want. Now, to get this into Webflow, let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Uh, struggling to create the flexible view, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, there's something in display grid. Uh, okay. And the trick is to add an invisible square element, zero width, and 100% bottom padding to the grid. Add an invisible square element 
to the grid. Set equal height to set equal height to all rows by grid auto rows 1fr. Then reposition the invisible grid element as well as the first grid element to overlap. Okay. Uh, all right. Trick is add an invisible square element, zero width and a hundred percent bottom padding. Like just add it to the grid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That emoji pretty much, pretty much sums it up. Like add an element. So like, but I can't add an element to. I can't just add like a div. See? Can I? All right. Okay. Go back. Go back. TSS. Let's see. Sack overflow. Where we all live. Okay. So just the container is display grid. That's what we got. We got a 1FR, 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 and a grid gap of 5. Um, our content. Wait. Container. Oh, I see. It's the div. They're adding a before. Oh, see that he's doing that. He's doing that padding. That padding bottom, as well. I don't know if I can touch pseudo classes with a webflow. I've never really tried. I mean, I could like add a an embedded element and just like code this up, but like then, like that's not great. Because then I then I'd have to pull in the uh, dynamic. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Okay, let's just see if we can emulate this. Okay, because I've never used these these controls even in Webflow. <laughs> I've never used these controls. There's an old Vine. If you're if you're a fan of Vine or what were, was a fan of Vine or maybe it's back. Who knows these days? Okay. Display grid. I want one fr, one fr, one fr, one fr. Okay. Go in here. Yeah. One fr, one fr, one fr. I think everything's... Well, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Here we go. Okay. Hang on a minute. Damn. Damn. I was getting really excited there. I was supposed to say, Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to do it. It just didn't. I think I should, like, learn... Grid. In general. <laughs> The height is 1FR. Okay. We're going to push through. <laughs> We're going back. We're going to go back to Flexbox. I'm going to have to learn Grid. Um, and then I'll learn how to generally put it in. Because I, I found that when I learned Flexbox, like I was just using, you know, inline block and stuff. I found that when I learned Flexbox... You know what? Actually, I want to try something. I want to go back. Redo, redo, redo. I want to see this padding 100. So it's a display vertical inline block and you vertical align top. But it, they're, see, they're always adding an invisible element. Grid gap is 5. See, the 1FR I think is fine. I think we've set that right. Our grid gap is fine. Like, that's obviously just variable. The background color, it makes no difference. But I don't know if we can do this pseudo element. I feel like we can't. Like we can go into our selectors. Can't do that. Like I've never really touched a pseudo element unless I obviously like I'm just coding it up myself, but it's specifically in Webflow. This thing's height 100. Let's see. Is this affecting it? Oh, maybe this is affecting it. Okay, here we go. Wait a sec. Hang on a minute. Okay. It's still growing in that. Row span, column span. Oh, I see what's happening here. Because the actual rows is growing or growing. I see. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, I've never used grid. Invisible element looks like one cell with display none. Yeah, see, that's the thing, though, is I can't... Like, see, I'm in this uh, sort of dynamic Webflow element. 
I can't like go in and just add a block or even just talk to like not talk to. Well, maybe I am talking to them, talking to the pseudo elements. Uh, that's oh man. So it is going to go on one. Like, would I have to go in and not set... Like, would I have to set the actual... I would have to set the actual grid, uh, like, columns and rows to be a specific height and width, I think. Like, one FR. Like, can I set an FR to something else? So that it's... Like, I don't know. One VW? And then, wait a second, this is totally for experimentation. Wait, what? Didn't I just set this? What the hell did I just set? <laughs> what the hell did I do? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I want to try to get a couple of sections done, so we're going <laughs> to... We're going back. <laughs> just like in Lost, we got to go back. I've never even seen Lost. I just know that reference, strangely. Okay, we're going back. Everyone simmer down here. Going way back. Just like none of this ever happened. <laughs> like it's just Yeah, I gotta I gotta learn I gotta learn more grid other than my like you know, ten minutes with it. Okay. So let's Okay. This is all back to normal. Oh yeah, this is when I was experimenting with the three seventy five and then the forty nine percent. So we're actually going to just, like, like let this grow and shrink. Because it doesn't look, like, horrible or anything. And I'm going to go in and actually just set these to names. Because it's driving me a little bit nuts. So, like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, see? Oh, there's our there's our limit kicking in. I don't know. We're going to call this... They're all going to be Terry. First name that came to mind. Terry's a big community contributor. Ooh, that was a nice picture, actually. All right. Hey. All right. Terry's a busy bee. Coming in here. All right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Let's, um... I mean, let's do it. So, we have this section. Wait a second. What is going on here? Did, did we break? Did something break? Did this break? Oh, wait, no. Did it break? It broke. The top section broke. I don't know what I don't know what broke the top section scroll. I'm not sure what that was, whether I actually toggled something off. Doesn't matter. We're working on this section. I'll go back to the other section later. Okay. So, what we want what we're seeing here is we obviously want um, the heading uh, section wrapper to always sort of have space around it. So we're going to just add like a solid, I don't know, like I usually just start around like I usually do like a 10 picks. Um, that's just enough so that we can always adjust it by like a dynamic unit, like, you know, a VW, a VH or whatever, depending on your use case. But I just like a good like 10 pixel because that allows me to see it. And if it looks too small, like that looks a little too small to me, then I'll be able to change it. And it's just a really easy cut sort of base number. I'm sure we all have our own base numbers, but you can see already that the text is bumping up around the sides of the text wrapper. So let's like, let's just set this. Now I'm going to show you this again. Like, I think I may have showed this on another stream, but like if you hold down shift and you use this, like the performance is horrible. Oh, Oh, did they fix it? So every time I've ever used that, like, shift or alt, like, alt will only do the left and the right in this case, or the top and the bottom. Like, every single time I've used it, that performance was dreadful. I think they fixed it. Well, they must have fixed it, or something. Something happened. Again, we're just going to add it to sort of a baseline 10. 10 is probably too much, to be honest, but that's totally fine. And then we're going to add a um, background mask. That we're going to be able to change. We're going to we're going to start using combo classes to choose what colors we want in our background mask. Because we may use different ones in different posts for different types of pictures. Those type of things. So, uh, here's our item. And it is position uh, static. We're going to make it position relative. And we are going to add an element. Add a div specifically. I'd like it to be at the top. Because it's going to be at the top. It is going to be absolute. 
And we're going to make it 100%. 100%. And it's now there. So now we're going to probably have to set some Z-index stuff. That's fine. Uh, it shouldn't be relative to the body. It should be relative to this thing. Did I just set this to relative? Position is relative to... Well, it definitely isn't relative to body because it's in this thing. I don't know what the heck that thing's reporting. That's fine. I don't care about that. Okay. So we're going to set a background. So we're going to set a background. Now we can do like a cool gradient if we want. So something like that. And here's the gradient selector in Webflow. So obviously this is just like... These are just solid colors. And we're going to like... I don't know. Just for fun, we'll set it to... Uh, the gray, the hat gray, and the click this guy, and we'll set it to the hat blue. And we can set our uh, opacity, so like, I don't know, 70%. And set, um, whoa, what the heck? Oh, that is not the opacity. Whoopsie, that this is the opacity. Set the opacity to 70 in this case. So it'll, it'll take that baseline color I selected and just it'll do like an adjustment. And then it'll take this guy here. And uh, click here. And we'll make him like, I don't know, like 10. See how it's doing that gradient? And then this is how you can kind of adjust it. So if you want a specific adjustment, that's what that percentage is there for. So you can do like a 50% and see so it'll like come up to the 50% mark and then sort of gradient out. Or we can do this. Now, obviously, we got to fix our uh, Z index, which is fine. So um, we'll set. Let me see here. I just want to see if I like this. So we can sort of set like a cool sort of effect. I kind of always like just like solid ones to be honest. Um, and I think I am going to just do that. That's just sort of my, I think, I think like, I've been really liking, I think it's all 77s. That might be crazy. I think that might be, oh no, that's right. And then do like a 0 0.9 on it. Well, let's do like a 1.0 just to like see it. Uh, no, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit darker maybe? Probably this. Like we should probably like incorporate our colors. So let's do the dark gray. And let's change the opacity to, usually I start at 70. 70 is probably good. Uh, obviously, the text is the wrong color, but we're going to change that. And then we're going to go in here and change the text. So the text is going to be that white. And it's underneath. So obviously, that's not good. So what we're going to do is, uh, obviously, we're going to, I mean, we're going to set these to be better. Gonna make this relative now because we need to use a Z index. I'll make this two, so it's just above it. And there's that. So I think 70 is probably too much. So let's go back. Set it in this particular case to like maybe 50. 50 is probably good. Like even like 30. What if it's just zero with that white text? No, see that's not good. I don't know, zero point like four maybe. Let's do like a 0 0.5. Let's just leave it at 0 0.5. That's kind of a neutral spot. We'll leave it like that. There's all our stuff. There's all our meta. Like I said, we're just going to bring all the toys in the toy box here. Now, one thing I do want to see is one thing we did want to experiment with is, so this heading section wrapper, obviously we made a class for it. We can use it in multiple cases, but I'm going to have to like copy paste this around. And it's going to be used in several elements in this, so like right here, right here, right here. And so, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we should make it a symbol, and then s experiment with those. Like so, what? So symbols in Webflow are like the repeatable areas, like the nav bar, as I've said. And I'm thinking that we should make it a symbol. And there's like something where you can in inject like dynamic information into them now. I think, where it'll just like it'll keep the same heading, keep the same structure, keep the same thing, like as it is a symbol. But then it will actually, it'll actually like change the, the section heading because normally like the section heading would have to be the same. Let's just, let's just try it, eh? So let's, um, we're happy with this for now. So let's create a symbol. We're going to call this um, section heading. And we're going to create a symbol. And, uh, okay, that works. So now, I want to see though. So we go into here and we click on this. See, here we go. Heading, link to field. Click the purple icon label to create or connect override fields which let you edit symbol content without affecting the master symbol. Learn more, please. Learn how symbols simplify and speed up the design process. I understand what symbols do. 
over so we want to see all right so that's working good <laughs> that's working great okay let's go symbols we specifically want to see overrides come on come on webflow come on now uh webflow university maybe maybe just search in here quick find web elements I don't want to see a course. I'll do all this stuff. Style manager. What is going on here? All right. To Google. Webflow symbols. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I guess I did see there was an email. I think I got an email that said like Webflow University 2.0 had just come out. And so I wonder if there's like a problem right now. I don't really want to watch a video. Uh, okay. Well, let's just, like with Grid, as it was so successful, let's see what happens. New override field. Uh, name the override field. Uh, section heading? Sure. You've created and linked an override field. Override fields let you edit the symbol content without affecting the master symbol. You Now, you can, cr you can apply content overrides on different instances of this symbol. Go to symbol instance. Oh my god. Back to instance. Okay, let's see what happens. So, our next section uh, is going to be from the news. So, let's go. Hide this. Let's make another section. Put it above our spacer. Call this from the news section. Boom. And inside of here, we're going to add a symbol and add this section heading. Okay, so they're both identical, obviously. Now, if I change one, let's see what happens. So if I change, like, no, see, look at that. I can't even get in there now. Okay, okay, here we go. Edit. Section heading. Okay. What? Do I have to add another one? Like. Uh. Just, <laughs> you can now apply overrides on different instances of this symbol. Please. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm back. I'm back to the beginning here. From the news, unlinked. Oh, crap. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, we're clicking out. Clicking out of everything. I'm going to refresh here because I want to see how this works. You click once. There's your thing. Look at that. Now I want to see something. I'm in here. I scroll down. So it has the border. Okay. So when I'm in there, so if I double click on here, I'm in the instance as I normally would be. Okay. So now. Okay. Right. didn't do anything from the news is unlinked oh crap do I have like just a dead wait what section heading is section heading okay hang on a minute what is going on here show all settings that's not what we want right here we go Manage override fields. Oh, here we go. Delete this one. Section heading. Oh. Um. Community spotlight?
See, it changed it in both. Let's click in here. From the news was deleted. All right, well then, why are you showing it to me then? <laughs> like, it's just... Okay. So I add a new override field from the news. Okay. This is... What in the heck? Community, community Spotlight is unlinked now. From the news. All right, now it's changing it on both. It'd be really like I'm a hundred percent certain this would be like super freaking easy if that web if that Webville University page just do it. Like we gotta look up override fields. Like this is just this is ain't gonna happen. Um, please, oh my god. No, that's not what I wanted. Oh my god. This? Maybe this? This is the announcement of it. Okay, so say you have a section on your homepage. Etc. Okay, how this works. Define a symbol. Done that. Perfect. Define override fields. Define content image content elements like text images videos links you'd like to make overridable as override fields if you'd like an element to have the exact content in every instance you should not create a field for it right that makes sense all right so he's making the picture the little text and stuff he's making a new override field oh i see it's just a gif okay override content fields per instance Per instance. Copy and paste that symbol as needed. And in the symbol settings panel, set unique. Okay, give me a sec. Right, so I didn't need all this crap. Although I deleted this, why would it show this? Lots of figuring stuff out here on stream today. Um, or lack thereof, I guess. <laughs> Uh, from the news is an override field and it is connected to this. That's not what I want to call it. I want to call it uh, headline. No, it's probably just heading title, probably. Where did I, how did I spell that? Damn it. Okay. It's not multi-line. From the news is fine for now. That's the default. Okay. So now I click on here. This thing says from the news. This thing says from the news. I don't like that. Call this Ah, there we go. See, it was easy once we got the instructions. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, so I'm changing the heading title, and then look at that. It even is the blue thing. You can reset it to from the news. Excellent. So in this particular instance, I click on down here. Yep, okay. So in this particular instance, I'm going to do community spotlight. That is brilliant, actually, and I'm actually going to probably refactor some of my other sites. Okay, awesome. So... That's all working well. Let's, uh, I mean, do we need to build the new section? We should probably, just thinking, like, do we start now? Let's just, let's just keep, like, pushing on. I want to get all this, all this stuff in here. Let's say, uh, let's just do it. So let's, let's go from the new section. We have a section heading. Uh, how, what did I do here? I did a readable container, right? So let's, uh, let's add a readable container. We're going to uh, put our section heading in there. See, we're starting to get things to be a little more module. So, readable. Or modular, I should say. And I'll put that in here. And then, in here, let's take a look at what we want. We want four content areas and a big add part. The big add part is going to be, like, kind of a master item and push all this stuff off to the side. Okay, so this, this, this div is going to be a little bit different. So, that's fine. So we're going to have sort of two columns, I guess. Um, I guess we can try actually grid, right? Because then you could have the two and not have to set percentages. 
It sounds kind of nice, honestly. Um, let's let's try a grid item from from scratch. Maybe that'll help me. What's this? Oh, right, because I want to just do as I use flexbox immediately after saying that. Okay, that works great. This is good. Okay, let's do it. Um, so this is a readable container. And the readable container is going to contain all the readable stuff. That makes sense. But we also want an add column. But the thing is, is it's like, okay, should we even have that? This is a readable container. We don't want this to be grid. Let's see what happens. Let's just add a blank div. Let's just do some experimentation, eh? Here's some fun. So, we go in here. Go into grid. Uh, I'll leave it at the fault, sure. Oh, is that my grid? Oh my god. Can I put it below it? So there's my grid. Now, 1FR, 2FR. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's being affected by the flex box. I see what's going on here. There we go. So let's say, what is going on there? That's like the number one flexbox mistake I make. It's not even really a mistake. It's just sort of like, what is this? Oh, right. Okay, so here here we go. This is probably the beginnings of something. <laughs> he says, being confused. Uh, okay. So if I want to like change that, look at this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we change this to 0 0.5 and 1 FR. Wait, but how is this 1 FR? Auto fit can't be enabled where there are auto flexible FR, min max, or whatever. Okay, I don't care about those. But okay, now I want to I do want to change something here. So this The question is is do we put and like I don't really know grid, like I said. So do we put is this one column and this one column and then we have another nested grid item or do we do column column one row for all of it and then we just do like flexbox items in here well let's do i've never used a nested grid oh I'm clicking on the wrong thing as well um i guess we don't really need this this other column eh? okay okay here we go okay we may have something here so if i want to edit this and click into here Oh, this is an area. Areas allow you to define your layout before you place a single element. Elements placed in an area will move and resize. I wonder if we could use that functionality to get that perfect square going with the with the padding and that. Although I don't know if that's true, and I could just be lying to you right now. This is an area. Column two, start there. Row one and one. That makes sense. That's fine. This is an area. I don't know. This is gonna be our add area. So add placeholder. Okay. Now let's take our... We don't really need our readable container. Uh-oh. What's going on here? I promise I'm clicking. Okay! Oh, I'm in. There we go. I thought maybe my mouse was giving out. Okay. Uh, let's go in here. See there? Okay, so that's called add placeholder. Let's go into here. No. I'm going to go into here. There we go. And... No, I don't want to add an area. I want to... There. Wait, do I have to delete that area now? Is there still an area there? Damn! Am I supposed to have an area? I think I should probably just dive into grid. Because, like, I can see it already becoming, like, really useful. But I just don't know what I'm doing to delete this area. Yeah, I feel like I don't need an area. Okay. Alright. So... I want to have a block in here, so let's click on it. Whoa, I keep clicking in the symbol. Okay. Uh, I think we can probably just get rid of this area. Uh, we can add a div into that area. It's going to be called a an add place holder. Whoa, I'm bumping my microphone. And I'm uh, skeptical. I'm skeptical, but yet optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this. Let's grab this. Good. Now, I'm going to make this item flex, I think. Yeah, definitely. 
because I'm just going to grab a quick piece of text. Text block. Add. Now I have some stylings up here, so I want to see what I did up here. That's a placeholder add. Um, maybe I should name this. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Placeholder add. But then we're going to call it like square. Or no, we're going to call this grid. So I know we're going to make a combo class. Okay. So then we're going to change these to 100%. And 100%. And do I have a piece of text in there? I do. But, oh, maybe I named it. Oh, placeholder add text. Inventive. There we go. Okay, so now this will grow and so will this. If I had a webcam... You would know that I'm squinting pretty hard right now. Okay. <laughs> like, it's just... Okay. From the news section. Uh, I need to move this. This just looks like crap right now. I'm just going to add a temp, like, 10 picks. Because I just... I'm going to add more than that. It's 60, sure. Whatever. Just to get it out of the way. Okay. Um. So, inside of this... Not inside of the symbol. But inside of this row... Yeah, okay. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. This is going to be interesting. Can I add, like, just a... Can I add, like, a... Like, a collection list like that? I can. Wait, but that adds a row. Can I make this thing span? Yes, I can, right? I can go into here. Wait, but there's another row now. Yeah. Right. So there's the area. Right, so that area. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean... I can see the uses for grid. That's for damn sure. How do I make this? Oh, wait. Maybe I can just... Yes! Look at that! Oh, man. Okay, here we go. See, we're getting it. We're getting it. Okay. <laughs> getting it live here. Okay. Um, empty state works good. Uh, okay. Let's um, limit it to four. So, we're going to go in here. Limit to four, four items. Now, these are going to be the same as the featured items because we don't have a featured flag yet, but we are going to do that, obviously. Uh, and inside of here, we have a bunch of stuff. Holy crap, I think. we got Yeah, we got a picture. We got a uh, template or a uh, category. We got a heading. And then we have our meta date and our author as well. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. icon what don't we have images in our blog post wait did I choose category no I chose back blog post what's going on here did I do I not have images oh well that's weird all right I must have just, like, added that one, like, SEO background repeatedly. Let's just do it. Bear's making this all rough for now. That's fine. Okay. Oh, let's open on that. Okay. Uh, prototypes. 2020. Ba, 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 ba. Stock photos, here we go. We can do some different ones. These are just random random ones from Pixabay, I think. There's one. I 
I'm just going to click around. I'm probably going to have some dupl duplicates in here, but that's totally fine. Three, yeah, there. 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 Like, obviously, these are not, like, compressed and such. Okay, so I'm gonna put any alt text or anything of that stuff yet, because we have these items. So we're gonna take this collection list and we're just gonna like just do a quick a quick one, and then we're gonna then we'll make it all sort of nice. So, um, we want them to wrap and we want them to be 50% each. Uh, so we are going to allow wrap, and we're gonna go into these items, and we're gonna like actually put proper class names and stuff like like. Stuff like that in a bit. Do a 50% thing. There we go. Uh, even then, I mean, it's probably too big. Although these images will be smaller. Uh, inside of each collection item, let's start adding our other stuff. So, let's take a look at what we need. We need uh, that heading. So this is going to be our, in this case, this will be our, uh, probably our text. Yeah, this will be our text wrapper. So let's do that. Let's just add our text wrapper. that again like obviously the last time i did this was like more formal and actually had like classes and stuff but we'll do that in a bit i don't know we'll make this like an h3 because it is like smaller and then we'll add another so we'll need like a meta so like and so uh two text blocks should do the trick perfect Okay, so let's pull in some dynamic data, shall we? To make it look half decent. And we'll pull in create a date. And we'll pull in the uh, author. There's that. Perfect. Now, each of these are going to be their own thing. And they're going to be like horizontal like it said see like now it's pushing out over on this over on this grid and i don't know what's gonna happen there uh we are gonna set this image though to be like much smaller so like the image itself is gonna be like really controlled because it's small so like something like that maybe i actually don't mind it being stacked like that maybe we should do that uh we'll do that later though so then we'll add to this div block. Like, this is super informal, obviously, but, like, add to this div block some padding. Probably, actually, we should probably just do it on all sides in this particular case. Cool. So that's working. Um, it's looking good. Let us take a look. So there's an add. There's this thing here. We want uh, some margin uh, between items, especially on the top and the bottom. So... We'll do that. So we'll add like maybe five, probably ten now, actually. So that works good. And let's take a look at this thing here. The collection item is ten. Collection list. I don't want that to be a little closer. Again, super informal, and we're going to go back and do some class names. This is just sort of how I prototype on uh, Webflow. And then our image is um hmm i wonder if we shouldn't use an image instead use a div and have the background that's probably what i'm that's, that's what i prefer honestly so let's uh, do a div and let's go with getting the dynamic data but we'll get the background image to be uh the thumbnail and then we'll in this particular case we'll probably do a contain we might do a, might do a cover still We'll see. Uh, maybe contain. No, definitely cover. None of that. Just for now. Again. And we'll take the image and just get rid of that. Kill that. Make this div like, hmm, I don't know, 350. Too big. Mm, 225. Still too big. 125. We'll do small. <laughs> 
150, sure. 150 and like 125. Maybe even less, 100. Something like that. This needs to be much smaller. Probably give it an H4. There we go. Starting to shape up. Just just getting the shapes going. Just getting the uh, the Lego blocks placed. And, like, I mean, we've come, like, a fair a fairly long way. Uh, obviously, this is broken, though. That's really weird. It's actually... I mean, not to jump around, but let's actually take a look at why this is broken now. I don't know why that is. So, this used to be... This used to just scroll. Did I turn off the scrolling? No, overflow auto. Is it because... I don't even know what would have changed. So overflow auto on the list is there. The max width, maybe if I set that. Maybe it's like overflowing and not... No, that didn't fix it. Just kind of shooting in the dark there. Here's the featured blocks, right? They're for 350 by 500. Everything's fine that way. What changed in the past little bit that would have affected this see oh yeah see this thing is max width this thing no oh we put the readable container in right and that would have broken it I bet you that's the problem I think we did that last Right, that did break it. Okay, what's the readable container? Max width is 1500. We're just not going to mess with that. We're just literally going to go max width, 1500, PX. Oh, see, then that's going to break that. No, that's not going to work. Oh, right, because it's 100%. So we would have to have the... Okay, let's do that. Okay. Readable container. Max width is 1500. Um, let's give this thing auto. And whoop. That may have fixed it. That's the thing. I forgot we changed that. Perfect. All right, so that's fixed. Um, things are starting to come together. Obviously, this is very prototype-ish. We haven't done any typography. Oh, my God. That looks dreadful. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, I do this mistake all the time. So I did all our styles <laughs> in uh, in this breakpoint, and now all those styles are only in that breakpoint. <laughs> Okay, no big deal. We did it very informally anyway, so that's no big deal. Okay. Um, so let's... Let's just break all this, and we'll just we'll just go back and we'll, we'll just redo it straight up. Let's just fix all this. Everything's set back to the way it was for the most part. Back to here, sure. Every single list item needs to be here. What's this? What's it doing? It needs to be uh, wrappable, like that. Each collection item is going to be 50% width, and it needs to be, why is this not? Ooh, no. Is 50 too much? Oh, because it would be like... Uh, Okay, so what's this now? Yeah, see, see the problem with like just doing things informally like this? Like, holy crap. Now we got like divs all over the place. So this is going to be our from the news thumbnail. So this is going to be like our smaller section. And we may use, again, we may use this design. Here's our placeholder ad. So let's like, let's start naming this stuff. So this is going to be, um,. I'm just going to call this a small four just for now. So we'll call this the small four list. We'll call this the small four item. Call this the small four, uh, what's this, uh, thumbnail? And what's all this stuff? Small floor text wrapper. Cool. Okay, so that stuff's working. Now, why is it that the list itself isn't doing it? Oh, because I didn't apply. Well, look at that. Well, what do you know?
Okay, so there's this. Um, and there's the four. Like we wanted. Width 150, height 100. Let's do that. Width 150, height 100. And inside of here. Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm doing wrap and everything else inside of the item. Yeah. So, there's there's why you use classes, everybody. <laughs> so that you actually do it. So, okay. So, uh, here's that. We're going to do this. Uh, there, we are going to apply background, cover, in the center. No repeatables. There's that. We're going to take these items. And we're going to do them. So that they're... 50% width and they wrap so how do we second we want these to wrap perfect so then we take the item and we want to just add a little bit of spacing so let's do like I don't know 10 pixels for now uh, yeah let's do 10 pixels for now that's fine uh, and then let's take a look at our design obviously this is very rudimentary but let's just start adding the other stuff. So we have all this stuff. It's all dynamic. It's all working. So let's just add like this piece here. So let's do that. So now that we have this as a div instead of an image, we can just easily add like a, like a, a child div inside. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to add inside of that. We're going to go into here. Get into the weeds a little bit here. And add some text. And that's going to be our template. So let's name all this so we don't have that problem again. So it's going to be a small four category wrapper. Again, we'll probably come back and like refactor these names, but just like on the spot, we'll just do them like this. Because we still have to do typography and stuff like that. Like obviously this looks like this looks like a very prototypish period for anyone else that for anyone that's just coming in. I saw a couple uh, viewers come in just to make sure you guys know that I'm not just <laughs> this. Ain't, this is my best work. This is the this is very much a prototype. Okay, text. Let's go name, and, uh, oh, no, not name, sorry, category, I think there's a category somewhere, I swear I just saw it, did I not put a category, updated on author, are there no categories for blog posts yet, what the heck did I do last week, oh, I have category, is category not mandatory, let us see, Get text. Did I just miss category? Oh, I did. That's my bad. Okay. There's that. And small category. So, we want this to be text align center. We want this to grab its background color. From category color. And we want it to be on the bottom. So, we're going to make this position relative. And make this going to make this position absolute and then we're going to make this width 100 percent and then make it uh, bottom zero and then the wrapper can kind of speak for itself so we'll do that and just so it's readable and then we'll just add a little 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 bit of padding like maybe like three pixels too much like 1.5 yeah that's good 1.5 for now. Perfect. And so there's, like, obviously, very rudimentary. Now, this is also my first time using Grid. I always use Flexbox for everything, and just, like, sort of on the spot, I use Grid. So I don't really know how to resize this stuff fully yet. And I've never used Grid on Webflow specifically either. So I need to learn, like, the Webflow controls, obviously. Uh, but it's working out pretty good so far. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, like, amazingly responsive, and obviously there's a lot of work to do. Uh, but you know we have our basic design and we're starting to get all these Lego blocks in here so then we'll basically do well, we'll basically come back and do like a big uh, sort of redo that's sort of what I do with uh, projects I come back and I just do start doing a bunch of stuff like you know I'll fix this fix this fix this like right here I just fix this stuff okay so that's all well and good um, let's take a look well I think this is no no we have another one okay we have one more area Okay, well, I might. I was just thinking of maybe possibly wrapping up uh, right now. 
to be honest. I'm uh, sorry for anyone that just showed up, but uh, I'll uh, I'll set up partially the next the next section for you guys, and then I'll and then I'll call it here. So it's just gonna close all this. This temp spacer is just so that I can scroll down, so it looks nicer. Okay, so let's add a section then. Um, yeah, my uh, also my my scroll wheel is broken, and now I can't select the body for some reason, which ain't great, honestly. Um, body, please. There we go. Excellent. And we're going to add to the body. We're going to add a section. And this is going to be called... The, what is it called? Framework section. I feel like we're not going to do that many framework things anymore. Like, I think we had different plans when we made these prototypes because they're a little bit older. But we'll move this above the temp spacer. I'm going to call this the framework section. Uh, well, thank you, CyberSect. That, uh, <laughs> thank you for cheering me on, especially with my, with my grid... <laughs> My grid uh, antics. Okay, let's throw that. Um, let's throw that readable container in. And inside the readable container, we are gonna add our symbol. And the heading title is not from the news, but it's just gonna be frameworks. And then our section is gonna be flexbox. Maybe vertical. We center it up. Make all that look nice. Don't need to worry about the justification for now. And then what we'll do, readable container. We're gonna add. Normally we would just add um I guess. Can we just change that? That's a good question. No, we can't if we link everything together. Um okay, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually end it here because I'm gonna have to dive into the weeds of uh, getting another CMS collection and stuff going. Uh, but if you're interested in any of this stuff, uh, please follow us. We also have a weekly uh, web development um, web development podcast as well, uh, just called HTML All the Things Podcast. It's on all the services that I'm aware of, so you know, go check it out on there. Uh, so please go check that out. Uh, we have this that will be a site eventually, and uh, we also have a YouTube channel where we also upload the episodes of the show, and you know, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. So come check us out. Thank you very much, CyberSect, for hanging out. Um, please actually report back if you want uh, about that uh, the, the fighting the grids to make the squares because that would be really awesome. And I think I'm going to play with grids just personally like uh, in like a notepad++, just something really basic where I just kind of zoom in on grids or maybe some VS Code and uh, really zoom in on grids to be like – to uh, mess, mess around with the actual – properties you know messing around with the actual css properties but uh but yeah oh we also have a discord server if anyone wants to come hang out ask questions uh we have people in there chatting away about all kinds of th th things uh html css you know php there's some python in there a little bit uh there's all kinds of stuff everyone's talking about just general tech movies whatever else come check us out on that as well uh, and you can, uh, yeah, so if you find our website, just htmlthings.com, and it's very prototype. I want to be clear about that. It's very, very first draft, and then we just sort of published it because we needed a site. So come check us out. And, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be making more streams. Mike, which is uh, my partner in crime, he does more sort of technical streams, and I'm just doing sort of Webflow stuff and actually just building projects at the moment, building this particular project because this has been on the back burner for a really long time. So hope you enjoy the show, everybody. Thank you all for hanging out, and I will see you again next time later. <laughs>